First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How recognized. How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correction officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correction officer. Uh... How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. Guys, Happy New Year. It's January 1st, 2020. The beginning of a new year and the beginning of a new decade. Guys, even though Corrections has a lot of concerns going on right now, it's still a great time to be part of this profession because we're going to start implementing changes. And I think people are more open to listen to us now than they ever were. Again, shows like this, communities like this have really been getting our concerns out there at a greater level. And people are listening. Trust and believe people are listening. When we come back from our sponsor, I want to talk to you about what I have coming up in the month of January for Tier Talk and two speaking engagements I have coming up as well. And if you guys are near the area, I would love to see you, love to meet you, maybe share some stories. I'm always open to hear stories. And if you guys are able to, maybe I can even have you come on Tier Talk if you're near those events because I'll be there for a few days. So I'm always looking for content, always looking for content, always looking to share knowledge, experience, stories. So I come back from our sponsors. I'll give you a little bit of what we have going on in January a little bit about those speaking events that we have coming up. And I wanna tell you something that really brightened my day at the beginning of January 1st, 2020. So really, it brightened up the beginning of this new year and the beginning of this new decade. And it started with a phone call from Connie Eileen. And we all know Connie Eileen. She's the CEO for the Civilian Correction Training Academy. She's put her heart and mind into this business, her soul as well. And I'm hearing good things about how the business may be taken off because we all know that everybody needs training. And she's devoted her time to come up with these great curriculums. And when we come back, I'm gonna share a little story that she said with me. All right, guys, so if you have it, the show tear talks for you, you brave men and women that work in corrections, so please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is gonna notify you every time I post a video. We're gonna to go to our sponsor, and when we come back, we're gonna discuss a little bit of some movement on Tear Talk for 2020, and we're going to share a story. Stand by. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it. It's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. So let's start off with Connie Eileen. Hey, Connie, great job. I'm so happy for you that your business is starting to take off because I'm going to tell you right now, we need to get more training out there. Hopefully those that are interested in training civilian staff will start seeing that we also have to increase the training that we have for custody. But it's great to see that your curriculum is being heard. Because I'm going to tell you something, you have a very balanced approach to what you're teaching. Even though you're a civilian, you understand what it's like from a custody perspective as well. And that's what's really going to create uh, change in corrections, positive change. And that type of training is always needed and it should be welcomed. So it's great to see that people are opening up the door for that type of training. And it's good to see that as your business starts to open up, that Tear Talk may have had a bit of something in there. It's good to see that people that are watching this show are doing something. They're committing to an action. If they see that, hey, there was someone on Tear Talk that provides good training to civilians, it's good to see that they're spreading the word. And hopefully, Tear Talk was able to get you a few phone calls, which I believe you said there were a few people from Tear Talk that hit up your website, which is great. That's the key here. Having this great venue creates good exposure and hopefully people are able to spread the word. Also, real quick, as Connie was talking to her lawyer, you know, dealing with payments and, you know, how to make the contracts with these agencies, they started talking about criminal justice reform. And not only was Connie's name mentioned, but they also mentioned my name, Tear Talk. So guys, people are listening. They are watching this venue. So that blew my mind. What a great way to start 2020. You know, that, that's awesome to know that we're creating a venue and that people are listening. And I wish this would have happened a long time ago, but hey, new decade. So it's great to see that people are trying to get involved and hopefully we start creating those balanced changes. So well done, Connie. And uh, thank you for always being a part of what I do. Your information is tremendously valuable. 
Now, with that said, I just want to tell you two shows I have coming up for the month of January that I think you'll find interesting and two speaking engagements. One's going to be in April and the other's going to be in June. Now, guys, I'm up in the equipment a little bit. I invested in a few more cameras, um, some wireless mics. So I'm going to try to, you know, have different angles. So it's, you know, we're not just focused on us two the whole time. We're focused on me, the person I'm interviewing, both, you know, just different camera angles. And I'm going to have a wireless mic right up in the center so we get good sound. I'm going to kind of learn how to sync the sound with the three different videos. And I think I know how to do it. I've been teaching myself that. I've done it once before a while ago, but I think I found an easier way to do it. But with that said, two shows I have coming up in January, I think that are going to be very interesting topics for you. We're going to have John Patekis back on again. He's the gentleman that has over 50 years in the criminal justice profession. Great man, a lot of knowledge, and we're going to hear his story again. He's going to give out some really good advice, and he's going to talk about some of the changes that he's seen from when he started to where we're at now. I believe now he teaches at college, so he's still involved in the field, but just to have that longevity, I mean, he definitely is creating a legacy in the criminal justice system. He also has a book on the market, too, and I think it's going to be a very interesting show. Last time we interviewed him was a few years back. My guest today is Dr. John Patekis, uh, a 50-year criminal justice professional, and that's the reason why he wrote this book, 50 Years Working in the Criminal Justice System. I got to tell you something, Dr. John Patekis, that is a lot of years to be devoted to one field. It, it, and we've actually had John Patekis on the show before, correct? We talked right. about parole and probation. Um, I just got to ask you, the book, why do you feel right now there's a need for such a book? Well, you know, Anthony, I, I think the two biggest things facing this country right now are economy and crime. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I think, you know, we're, we're finding an influx of more students uh, majoring in criminal justice who want to get into the field or whatever. Uh, so, you know, based on my practical experience for 50 years in the field, I wanted to share some of those tips for, you know, students and others who are interested in getting into that field. So I think it's time we do it again, and what a great way to start the new year. Also, I talked to retired Major Louis Soto, who is also a college instructor. He teaches at Rutgers. And I said college instructor. I meant to say a professor. Sorry, Soto. Used to that. Different terminology. And what we're going to do, and I think my audience will find this very interesting, is Major Soto moved up in the ranks from officer to sergeant, sergeant to lieutenant, lieutenant to major. So we're going to do a show where we discuss the differences between each ranks. So from like a first line supervisor to a second line supervisor to a third line supervisor, maybe some advice for each rank and just a compare and contrast. Like what's the difference between being a sergeant and a lieutenant or a lieutenant and a major? And I think that's very good information. I think it's something that you guys will enjoy listening to. And I may release the video in three parts, one for the sergeant, one for the lieutenant, one for the major. So we have three parts, but we're going to record it hopefully within the next week or two. So that's two good shows we're going to have out. I have two speaking engagements coming up. So if you guys are in the area, please check it out. One is in Nebraska. It's for the Nebraska Correctional Administrator and Managers Association. And it's going to be, it's like a jail conference. A lot of people are going to be in attendance and I'm bringing a whole panel with me. It's not just going to be me. It's going to be Connie Eileen, Keith Helwig, Gary York, William Young, Russ Hamilton. I mean, we are going to have this great panel discussion, a lot of good dialogue. And then we're going to be there the whole time during the conference, which is a few days. So hopefully we get to meet and greet, maybe do some more tear talk content that would be great but basically get to know you guys interact and maybe hang out with some people from nebraska you guys can show me what it's like to be in nebraska I can't, i'm really looking forward to that guys it's in april and in june i'll be partnered with somebody and we'll be teaching at masca and we'll be teaching kind of bridging the gap between service providers and custody we're still constructing the powerpoint now we're trying to get multiple perspectives to see what the concerns are and really dig deep but it's more of a dialogue. Yeah, there's gonna be some PowerPoint involved, but we really never feed off the PowerPoint. It's kind of like just bullets for us. Basically, we, we made up the course or we're making up the course as we speak. So 
we're looking for that interaction. We're hoping that we get more people that are involved. So when we go to the audience, we get to their specific concerns because the class that we're putting together is really based on the information that we get from the audience. What specifically is the concern? And then we may have ways to address it. And part of it is not just going to even just touch on us working together, service providers and custody, but also going to be touching on leadership because leadership sets the tone for that trusting environment. If you don't have good leadership, then you're not going to be able to create what's needed to build this bridge between civilians and custody. But again, I think this is going to be very interesting. I'm looking forward right now, just baby steps, looking forward to doing the show with John Patakis as well as Louis Soto. And then I'm looking forward to finishing the PowerPoint with a good friend of mine to get that up and running in June. And guys, really looking forward to go out to Nebraska. I mean, we're going to be there all four days, I believe, or three days. So the meet and greets, everything. I'm really just interested in meeting everyone there. And if you're in the Nebraska region, you got to sign up for this conference. It's going to be an amazing conference. A lot of good information, a lot of good speakers. Pam Goldsby is one of the organizers. I just think we're going to really just create a very good venue for some open dialogue and that's what's needed. And again, guys, if you ever have any ideas, Tear Talk's a great venue for it. You know, it looks like people do watch, people do listen. So I'm always open to hear your ideas. So if you guys want to email me, ganjianthony at yahoo.com, ganjianthony at yahoo.com, you're more than welcome to, you know, share my venue. I'm more than welcome to give you a spot on my show so you can discuss your idea or even share a story or something that we can learn from. It is an informative channel, so... I think that would be great too. As always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. The bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe. Whoa.